Hi, welcome back. We're in Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek, chapter 3, Cases and Gender, and we're looking today at section 3.1, which is headed the genitive and dative cases. Now, as you got to the start of this chapter, uh, you read these couple of pages through on page um, 31 and 32, you might have thought, oh goodness, this looks a bit confusing. There's a whole bunch of new concepts which suddenly appear all at once. It's about twice as much stuff as you've ever had to learn before in the same number of pages in the previous chapter. It all looks a bit daunting. It isn't as difficult as it seems, I promise you. It's not as difficult as it seems. We're just going to pause in this video and we're going to look uh, at the idea of the genitive and dative cases. What the basic concept is behind them. And we're also going to look at the form, the morphology, what the actual uh, written form of those cases are. And you can see that in the table on the board right here. Then in the next video, we'll look again at this same section and we'll look at a couple of sample sentences which will help you to understand then the meaning of these, uh, the genitive and dative cases in Greek and you'll start to get a feel for how they work. But don't be freaked out if when you looked at this you just thought, oh my goodness, there's so many words and most of these I never read before in my life. It isn't as difficult as it seems. Let's just recall what we know already about cases. Remember, a case is like a little label that's attached to a noun or a pronoun or an article which tells you what that word is doing in the sentence. It tells you, for example, if it's the subject of a verb in the sentence. If it's the subject of a verb, it'll have the case label nominative attached to it. So if you want to make something like the word, the subject of a sentence, ho logos is in the nominative case, ho, the, and logos, word, the word. Wherever that comes in the sentence, you know that's a subject to the sentence because it has this little label the nominative case ending and the nominative form of the article attached to it to tell you it's the subject of the sentence. You get the same thing in the plural, the words. Similarly, if you want to uh, make the word the object of a verb in the sentence, what do you do? It's very simple. You attach another little label to it, this time the accusative label, to tell you that it's the object of the verb. And here it is, ton logon. So instead of ho, you have ton, instead of logos, you have logon. And this is like a little flag, like a little label attached to the stem, log, and it tells you that this is not the subject, this is the object of the verb in the sentence, ton logon. So for example, you might have Jesus speaks the word, and the word will be ton logon. If it's plural, tus logus. Now that's what you've learned already. You've learned logos, logon, logoi, logus. And you've learned hot, ton, hoi, tus. Okay, nominative and accusative, singular and plural. Now, the full complement of cases that you need to learn at this stage includes genitive and dative. And there are two tasks, therefore. First, you've just got to learn the form, which you see right here. And second, you've got to understand what they, what they mean. Let's just go through the form, just so we've done it. The article first, hot ton to toe, hoi tus ton tois. Hot ton to toe, hoi tus tone toys. Notice a couple of little tiny things. There's an iota subscript there, don't forget it. And uh, the rough breathing is on the uh, iota, not the omicron. You saw that before because it's a diphthong at the start of a word. Okay, hot ton to toe, hoi tus tone toys. And then the case endings on the, uh, the masculine noun. Logos, logon, logu, logo, logoi, logus, logon, logois. Now, what do you notice about these straight away? As soon as you look at them, I hope you notice that in almost every case, no pun intended, the, um, the ending on the noun is the same as the ending on the article. You spot that? The differences are in the um, nominative singular, where it's a little bit different, but look, ton, logon, to, logu. To, logo, tus, logus. So you've got it here. Hoi, logoi. There's no rough breathing here, obviously, because it's not at the beginning of the word, but you've got the same other letters. Oi, uh, omicron, iota, omicron, iota. Tone, logon, tus, logus, tone, logon, tois, logois. Okay? Now this is great because it means once you've learned one, you've learned the other. You've only got to learn this as a little bit different. It's not hos. That's actually a different word in Greek. It's ho. 
but you'll learn that in no time at all because that's about the most common word you'll ever come across in Greek. So learning logos, logon, logu, logo, logoi, logus, logon, logois will also give you the article with about two minutes extra thought. That's the first thing, just to learn the form. Now second, what do these cases, genitive and dative, mean? Well, Duff's got an explanation here. In fact, he's got several explanations, and I think this is, <laughs> the fact that there's multiple explanations is sometimes what makes it a bit difficult. Let me give you uh, the simplest explanation that I think works um, for understanding what these uh, cases, genitive and dative, mean at this stage. Here goes. Genitive, to logu, means of the word. Of the word. When you see a genitive, think of, of the word, or of the words, of the words, plural. If there's no article, so you've just got this, logu, it's of our word, of our word. If it's just the article, uh, just the noun, no article, it's of words, of words. When you see the genitive, think of, okay? Um, it's possible that you could have a word like truth in the singular, and it wouldn't be of a truth, it would just be of truth. But context will sort that out for you. The key thing is, when you see a genitive, you think of, okay? When you see a dative, you think not of, but to or for. To or for. So, to logo means to the word or for the word. Tois logois means to the words or for the words. And of course, if the article is missing, it's the same again. It's to our word or for our word or two words or four words and so on. That's the key to getting a sense of the meaning of the genitive and dative cases. Remember, a case is like a little label which att attaches to a word telling you what it's doing in the sentence. And if it's a genitive case, it means of that thing. If it's the dative case, it means to or for that thing. Now, of course it gets more complicated than that, right? But what's really intriguing is if you start from here, the more complex meanings of the genitive and dative cases become kind of obvious and you'll come across them one at a time and they'll make sense as we go. But if you start with this, it'll all make complete sense and we'll build it up bit by bit. So just a reminder, nominative is a little label telling you this thing is the subject of the verb. Accusative, that's a little label telling you this thing is the object of the verb. Genitive, that's a little label which tells you that it's of this thing, of this thing. So you just slap of in front of it and then write it out. Dative is a little label telling you it's to or for this thing. So when you're translating it from Greek into English, just write to or for and then translate it. And then we'll see in the next video, I'll give you some examples of how this works and suddenly the scales, I promise you, will fall from your eyes. If it's still a bit confusing now, click on the next video and I'll give you a couple of examples of how these work and you'll start to see, ah, now it makes sense why we're thinking genitive means of, dative means to or for, and so on. Okay, remember, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week, keep learning these things. It's um, worth practicing this, just as you were doing hot on hoi tus before, now just extend it, hot on two toe, hoi tus tone twice, and do the same with the noun, and then we'll soon have you learning these things. Come back in the next video, I'll give you an example of how the genitive and dative cases work in practice, and you'll start to see, ah, it makes complete sense, I understand it now. All right, God bless. Keep working hard. See you next time.